So the reason I'm here is because I'm going to say three things to keep it brief. I'm going to give you a couple of hints about uh, an, op an optimistic note and a, real, an, an, a note of caution. I'm going to say a couple of words about how we've addressed some of the challenges, and I'm going to give you a call, and I'm going to finish with a call to action. So 15 years ago, the Shell Foundation started working in access to renewable energy. And over that time, we've built up a portfolio of energy-related companies, which vary from mini-grids, stove companies, and to um, solar lamp companies, solar home systems, and enterprise companies. Now, we worked with them through co-creation, through incubation, and through early stage and mid stage growth. To give you an idea of the sort of scale where we're at now, one of our solar lamp companies is a company of about $35 million turnover. It has 10 million customers. We have a cook stove company that's about to sell its million stove in September. We have a mini grid company that's biomass based that's uh, now reaching, uh, has 35 plants reaching 35 districts in India. And we have a, an SME growth finance company with $350 million of management. So I say that not as a kind of boast or a showing off. I say that because we are beyond the pilot stage. These are enterprises that are already viable. But collectively, they are reaching around about 40 million people. And there's still 1 billion people that we believe can be reached by market-based off-grid solutions. So whilst these are probably one of the, some of the largest enterprises out in the market, they're still only 3 to 4% of the market penetration. So that raises a critical question of how you the rest. What does it take to get there? First of all, let's be optimistic that it can be done. The use of philanthropic money, foundation money, can catalyze private sector solutions. However, I have to confess that the leading companies that we've worked, that we've supported, we've been supporting for 10 years. And it's taken around anywhere between five to $20 million of support, which is grant, convertible grant, debt, and finally into equity. Now that's not cheap. That's patient, risk-tolerant capital in the early stages and it's taken a sustained business partnership. So the word of realism is, that's what it takes to get to scale. So my second point is how we go about addressing some of the barriers. And the great thing about being in this audience is that there's a very educated audience, uh, starting with the opening speeches, there's a great recognition of the barriers in the market, we don't have to go over that now. That's a huge step forward for the sector. How have we gone about addressing it? So access to finance is the biggest thing that these enterprises have to face. Where do we get our working capital for growth? We set up a working capital fund, which is jointly funded by some partners, which provides specific working capital to growing energy enterprises. So we've gone out and we've set up the fund. We've set up a carbon credit financing facility with other partners. What about distribution? You might, have a, you might have a product, you might have a service, but how do you get it to these sparsely populated areas? Well, last mile distribution is not working. There are no really viable models out there. So we set up a company to set about how to crack the last mile distribution channel. So that's number two. Number three, how about incubation, technology, new ideas, new business models? We've set up an incubator, which again, we're working with other people, to get faster progress towards getting viable business models, viable technology. That's again some way, a concrete way, it's something called factory. And it's a, a, an enterprise based approach to try and crack, improve, and make more cost effective early stage education. What about policy and regulation? Another barrier that people talk about a lot. Well, first of all, I have to say that everything we do in our countries, now we're getting to a certain, certain amount of scale for our enterprises, has to be done in, co in coherence with government and strategy. So it's no longer possible to live below the radar. It has to be coherent, it has to be consistent, and it has to be totally moving in, in, in concert with government or government wishes to see. A government can help a lot. So for example, two concrete examples. A solar, a solar lamp company managed to negotiate with government a VAT exemption for imports of solar raw materials, solar products. That's massively improved the ability to demonstrate to penetrate the market and enable prices to come down. Another example is one of the biggest things stopping private investment into mini grids is the worry about what happens when the grid arrives. I've invested my private, my personal capital into this business, and all of a sudden, the, the government-sponsored grid extension program comes to my door, 
what happens to me? Do I lose my investment? Or is there some sort of rules and regulations and an agreement, a policy about what happens in those circumstances? Absolutely vital that our enterprise is going to invest more private capital, that there are clear policy rules about the interface between offering and grid. And finally, on the second point about the barriers, these have to be addressed together. And there's a lot of talk about this, but we're putting our money where our mouth is, and in two countries, we're setting up a consortium and funding it to address these barriers collectively. In other words, seeding control of our own program. So, actually, these barriers address in concert, which is the only way to do it. We're talking about policy, we're talking about distribution, finance. We have to do it together. We can't carry on doing our own thing. So, that's my comments on how to address the barriers. My final point is more, and this is relevant for this meeting and others, it's more of a kind of call to action. And this has been a, a bit of a shock uh, to me. The killer statistic to me is that everyone seems to recognize that off-grid solutions are important. 85% of people living in energy poverty live in sparsely populated rural areas, yet the vast majority of investment in the energy sector still goes on largely on infrastructure. What is happening? We live in a space where we're basically providing very early stage, patient, risk tolerant capital to get enterprises created through their early stages and through their mid stages so that they can become investable in the markets. That's our job, that's the space where we belong. Now, aeroplanes use 25% of their total fuel consumption on take. How many flights will get to the destination if all the passenger says, well, I'm only going to pay, I'm only going to pay for the latter stages of this flight. I'm not going to pay for the ticket. <laughs> so it doesn't seem to make sense. And it cannot just be foundations like us that are doing this he early heavy lifting. There needs to be institutional capital to find ways of fill filling that gap, which is taking a $1 million turnover company to a $20 million turnover company. And I have a partner who is a bookstore company that has a $10 million turnover and a so in that company with $35 million turnover, and they can't get growth finance. Impact investors are there, but they're waiting for it to get to $50 million and to be completely de-risked. Of the $14 billion of impact investing that was spent in 2014, less than 80% was early stage funding. So my call to action is, I would love to work with some of the big agencies to figure out how to fill that gap. It's not granted, it's probably patient, more tolerant, lower level rate debt to take these companies to a much greater scale and how to grow to new markets and to new manufacturing capabilities. Thank you very much.